Hi, and welcome to this section on iterators and generators. Now, what are we going to learn in this section? We're going to start by taking a look at iterators and the iterator protocol. We're also going to take a look at how you can create your own types of iterators. Then we're going to move on to generator functions, which are a particular kind of iterator. And again, we're going to take a look at how you can implement your own generators. And we're going to take a look at how you can implement a design pattern called lazy evaluation using generators. Then we're going to follow up with more generators, but this time taking a look at how you can use generators to implement coroutines, concurrency, or sometimes also called lightweight threading, a way to do things seemingly in parallel. And finally, we're going to take a look at the collections module, which is a standard Python module that provides a lot of convenient iterators for you to use in your own code. But let's start with the video, what is an iterator? In this video, we're going to cover the iterator protocol, so the protocol that defines how an iterator should work in Python. And we're going to take a quick look at how you can use an iterator in real Python code. The idea of an iterator is very simple. An iterator is simply an object that you can use in a for loop, right? So if you can use some object to loop through using a for loop, then that object is an iterator. Iterators are really the bare minimum of a collection. Right. Iterators that are objects that implement the so-called iterator protocol and they support in and for. In other words, you can ask Python whether an element is in an iterator and you can loop through the iterator as I already mentioned using a for statement. But they do nothing more, not necessarily. These two operations are the bare minimum of an iterator. So an iterator does not necessarily have a length, right? For example, a list has a length and a list is an iterator, but the fact that the list has a length is not necessarily part of the iterator protocol. Iterators do not necessarily support indexing, right? So there are objects that you can loop through using a for loop, but you cannot retrieve elements from it using by passing an index, etc. So iterators are really the bare minimum of a collection that you can loop through. Now, this means that lists, dicts, and tuples are all type of objects that are often called sequences, and they extend the iterator protocol. All of these objects are iterators, but they do much more than the iterator protocol by itself prescribes. With that, let's take a look at how you can use an iterator in real Python code. Let's start with a very simple iterator and we're going to use a tuple, right? Because a tuple is a kind of iterator. And our tuple has three elements, A, B, and C. As I already mentioned, the iterators are defined such that you can always loop through them using a for loop. So if I can say for E and T, and then I say print E, I will loop through the A, the B, and the C and print them out. I can also say, for example, print is A, part of our iterator, and then it says yes, because the A is in the iterator, but for example, the D is not in our iterator. These operations are the iterator protocol, right? So that is the bare minimum that an iterator always supports. Iterators work under the hood using the iter and next functions and stop iteration exceptions. And I think it's quite revealing to just take a look at how you can see the inner mechanics of iterators by using these functions directly, even though you would normally not do that in real code. Sometimes you do, but it's very rare, but I think it's nevertheless informative. And it works as follows. So we have our iterator, right, our tuple t. And what you can do is turn this tuple into an actual iterator object using the iter function. So the iter function takes an iterable object, in our case, our tuple t, and turns it into sort of a meta iterator object, you could say, which I've called i here. And then you can retrieve objects from this iterator using next. So if I do this, I get a, because a is the first from my iterator, first element from my iterator. If I do it twice, I get a and b. If I do it three times, I get a, b, and c. Now, what happens if I do it four times? Because now we've exhausted our iterator, right? So if I try to get to the next element, I actually get a stop iteration exception. So this is how iterators work under the hood, right? They first an iterator is turned into an actual iterable object, and then elements are retrieved from this iterable object until a stop iteration is raised. If you use an iterator in a for loop, obviously you never get to see this actual stop iteration, right? So this means that using our iterator t in a for loop is actually equivalent to the following code. So I say itert. I think it's quite revealing to see how we can write slightly less elegant but equivalent code to our for loop before. So what we do is we, say, we put in a try statement. We get an element from the iterator. We say next i, accept, stop iteration, break, else, print e. Now, if I run this, scroll down to see the output, you will see a, b, and c, right? So it does exactly the same thing as our uh, for loop here above as this for e and t print using a for loop is obviously much more elegant and that's the way you should do it in real code but you will see that it's actually equivalent a b c 
And here we also get ABC, right? So we first, the way that works under the hood is that an iterable is first turned into an, uh, into an iterable object. Then with next, elements are retrieved from this iterator object until a stop iteration is encountered, in which case the for loop aborts. And here we say print E. Now, so that is basically all there is to know about the iterator uh, protocol. One thing that can be a little bit confusing is that the same word iterator is used often to refer to the T, in this case our tuple, the iterator, and the actual iterable object that underlies the iterator, right? I've also used the term here a little bit interchangeably, but it's important to realize that they are fundamentally different objects. And we will encounter that later in this section when we're going to take a look at uh, generators.